Hi everybody, this is Rick. And I'm Crystal. And this is the Rick and Crystal Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming out today. It was a rainy day. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. It's a rainy day. Um, last couple days, but we need it for our flowers and our garden and everything. Yeah, and it. the rain can actually be very relaxed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's right. Um, Okay, this is our Friday show, and uh, thank you for viewing. Uh, it's April 30th. Um, it's the 120th day of the year. That's what Wikipedia said. <laughs> this, yeah, 245 days left in the, in the, for the end of the year. Good so we're to like, know. We're like, a, know. we're like a third of the way there. I'm going to know when Christmas is. Well, let's see. 245 days left. Uh, that'd be five, six, uh, knock off six days, right? So... 239 days until Christmas. <laughs> wow! <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I, I wrote this down. I did some work today on this script in uh, in uh, the year 311. Now, you know, remember Christ was uh, crucified in like A.D. 33 and the apostles throughout that first century, first decade, you know, like they, they, they were all killed, you know, the ones that followed Christ. Mm -hmm. They were all killed and like, you know, I think John lived into uh, like 95, AD, 95 or something. Anyway, this happened in uh, the year 311 AD, April 30th, today, Friday. Uh, the persecution of Christians by the Roman Emperor Diocletian of the Roman Empire ended. It ended. He, it was horrific. He was killing them, crucifying them, uh, burning their Bibles. It's a, it, um, what this one pastor explained to us, Every Bible was burnt and destroyed. Every manuscript they had, except like one group of Christians had a couple pages, another one a couple pages, and they kept it together. God kept it together. But, you know, I mean, they, they, these guys are like out to just kill Christians, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, also on April 30th, uh, year 1492, guess what happened? No? Uh, what? What? No? Nobody know? Anybody know? On I April know. 30th, what happened in the year 1492? Anybody? <laughs> That's right, Christopher Columbus. Oh my gosh, yeah. I knew that! I knew that! Man, it felt like a trick question! <laughs> he had his commission from Spain. So he was able to go across the, and uh, discover uh, the Virgin Islands, right? That's what he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say he discovered America. That's what I was taught. But then later on, when I did my real history research, I'm like, no, I think he brought syphilis to the natives and... Uh, he discovered the Virgin Islands, which are now the Bahamas, which we go vacation in and get syphilis. <laughs> okay, okay. None of that part. Well, it's kind of true, isn't it, though? Isn't it? All right. Okay, also, on this day in history, April 30th, George Washington was sworn in in 1789. That's right, 17, yep, yep, our nation's first president. Okay, on this fun fact, <clears throat> I'm going to have to boo you. Oh, okay, all right. Well, that's what we think of that, Crystal. Go ahead. What do you have to say? You have to say something. Or? I do. Go, go ready. The mic's all all crystal now. Well, I have heard that I'm not talking enough, so I'm going to take over the show now. All right. Okay. <laughs> as long as I've got the mixer, we're fine. Also, I just wanted to comment on this. Uh, just one thing in the news, because we're not news heavy here. You know, we're we're happy because if we get bogged down the news, it's not going to be a happy show. No, no, the news sucks. Yeah, the news sucks. Yeah. Uh, the Biden administration is proposing to ban, ban menthol cigarettes. Really? Seriously. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's going to take a few years, but if they propose it, it's going to happen. Menthol cigarettes will be banned. Oh, that's bad. And it said uh, over 73% of uh, the smokers. black black men yeah. uh, are, are menthol cigarettes, and they proportionally kill black Americans more than... Uh, anyone else because of the menthol suit. When, when I was growing up, I smoked Marlboros, and guys around me smoked Marlboros or Winston's. Well, a lot of the people that I knew um, smoked like the uh, Newports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Newports. Like when, uh, we've got five five kids, and I think uh, two of my kids started smoking, and it was Newports, you know, and I was just boggled. I was like, um, so used to like, guys smoking camels and stuff and honestly you know the only people i knew that smoked newports were 
like uh, women would smoke menthol cigarettes, and uh, black men I met would, would smoke menthol cigarettes, like cool. Which is oh, but, when I first started smoking, I was smoking like those misties. Yeah, 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 yeah. Virginia, they cater, oh, and Virginia Slims, they, they cater misties and Virginia Slims. Yeah, they cater them to women. Um, you know what though? Unfortunately, it was kind of messed up because it wasn't it wasn't as strict as it is today. Because when I started smoking cigarettes. I would go into the gas station and buy them myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I used to buy Playboy for guys in high school when I was 15 at the mm -hmm. mall. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm real, real uh, proud. Yeah. Okay. Real, yeah. Well, uh, how about, um, if you'd let me, I'd like to get into this uh, little study I did, and then we have viewer questions for both of us online. They're just rent. They're good questions. They're I, I I screen them. There's nothing wrong. There's a we, we keep a PG show here, and you can applaud that. Thank you. See the studio audience. See you can tell us spring. The studio audience is a lot chipper and and they're happier. Yes, yes, yes. Also, we we put out cheese today. You're welcome. We put out cheese and uh, grape juice for us. No, that no, that wasn't wine. That's grape juice. <laughs> No, we're not giving you wine. <laughs> you come and watch the show for free. And we no, no, we're not giving you wine. Okay. Anyway, um, it is time for our five second dance. Are you ready? I was just thinking that. So Are you absolutely. Ready? Three, two, one. Here we go. Oh, I'm so sorry. 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 Here we go. Oh, I'm so when I You're dance, everything, everything, I just let it all go. Okay. Um, well, if you'll allow me just for a minute or two, I'd like to do a little study with you. you, you you're going to find this interesting. If you watched our previous shows, you know, you know we're Christians, right? We're, we're truth seekers. You know, we like to, we've been into so many subjects. We're, we're going to get into this year, you know, from a megalithic, uh, uh, those buildings down in South America to the pyramids over in Egypt and uh, uh, Babylon you know, and ancient technology, and UFOs, demons, you know, we're going to get into all that stuff, but that being said, we're, we're uh, doing a study on the book of Revelation, we, we told you we bought that uh, DVD set from K House, it's online, it's Kanoina House, but they just call it K House, it was Chuck Misler's uh, ministry, but he passed away a few years ago, anyway, he, he's did uh, Bible studies on all the books of the Bible, and we bought the one for Revelation, you know, it's verse by verse, and uh, we bought uh, manuals, you know, guide guidebooks and what have you. But uh, with that in mind, um, I just wanted to read a, a, just a chapter to you and tell you something about uh, part of the book of the Revelation, and uh, then we'll get on with some more uh, funny stuff. Okay? That's all right? Thank you. Okay. Um, we're going to go to chapter four first, okay? And then I, I got some notes here I want to talk to you about. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, I did this this study, you know, God, I feel God inspired me to do this because we are studying Revelation. And I, and Crystal had some feelings and thoughts about this. And uh, I just wanted to do this for her, you know, because she's my sweetie. Um, so, remember after I do this study, you know, keep your thoughts up. Uh it's called Seen in Heaven. And this is John. He's the one who bought, wrote the book of Revelation. And he probably wrote it when he was really old. God, God took him up and showed him this. What things of what had happened and what were going to happen in the future. After these things I looked. And behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard. Like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me said. Come up here. I will show you what must take place after these things. Immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was standing in heaven, and one sitting on the throne. And he who was sitting like a jasper stone, and a sardius in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, like an emerald in appearance. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and upon the thrones I saw twenty-four elders, sitting clothed in white garments and golden crowns on their heads. That's a picture of God on his throne, the Father, the Creator, God. Uh... You know, there's none higher than him. He is the highest. Uh, there's there's none beside him. Um, God is the beginning and the end. He has always been. 
you know, so if you if you have concerns about, well, how did life begin? How did, there was always God. There was always a God. So just imagine in your mind space and just a powerful being, you know, and three personalities. That I know it blows your mind. It does. Mine too. It's just, but that's that's how, you know it's ancient. It's it's a uh, just mind blowing. But if you if you read the Bible enough, that's where you get all these tragedies, like you know the, the his highest creation, Lucifer, rebelled against him, and now is out to destroy him. I mean, he want Lucifer wants to be God, you know? It's crazy, you know. Uh, but I wanted to read that to you because it's about the rainbow around God in heaven and around His throne. So <clears throat> you're good, buddy Rick. Did a little research. That's right. Uh, in my handy dandy Webster's Dictionary, <laughs> circa 1970. <laughs> it's like, hang on, let me get it. It's like this big. Yep, okay. yep, yep, yep. It's, 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 it's got to weigh like 25 pounds. But uh, at least, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I looked up the stones. You know, it it said, uh, you know, about the jasper stone. And he who was sitting was like a jasper stone. So it said, he, God, who was sitting there was like a jasper stone. It says, an opaque variety of quartz. In the Bible, probably a green or ornamental stone. And it said he was like a sardius, you know. And I, I never really knew what that, I've read that many times in the Bible. Didn't understand what it meant. Uh, the dictionary uh, tells us, uh, a precious stone, one of twelve set in the breastplate of the Jewish high priest. A ruddy stone, perhaps a ruby. So it was one of the stones that was set in the high the high priest breastplate. You know, if you if you have read the Old Testament, you know, the, that was God's people, the Jewish people. And he told them, he taught them through Moses, you know, and the prophets how to live and how he wanted to be worshipped because he was their creator, you know. It, it's only fair enough, you know. He provided everything for them. They should obey him. Right. But the high priest had this breastplate with, with 12 precious stones on it, uh, representing the 12 tribes and I guess Sardius was one of them uh, I looked up the rainbow the rainbow is two concentric circles the inner circle is called the primary rainbow the outer circle is called the secondary rainbow it's a bow or an arc of a circle consist consisting of the colors of the spectrum of the rainbow yeah. um, also emerald stone of barrel variety it's a uh, rich green ranking with the ruby and diamond and that's from the Webster's 1970 Dictionary. So I, I just thought that's pretty cool, you know, uh, just a vision of a uh, God on His throne. So you know, if if you're out there and you feel alone, just just try and remember, have faith that you know, when you leave this horrible world, you know, we're going to be uh, standing there with Christ and God, and uh, you know, out of these uh, sore, pitiful bodies. We were talking about that the other day. Remember when? Um, you know how you, people have seen spirits or ghosts. It, can you imagine? And we've seen people pass away. We saw my mother pass away. But uh, can you imagine when it's it's your turn or my turn or Crystal's turn? And they those near death near death experiences. They say they're like a, like leaving a coat or an old suit, and you just float out. Your light, your weightlessness, weightlessness. You know you don't have any weight to you. But uh, anyway. That's what I thought about that. Well, let's get... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You're going to set that off. Uh, this is Rick's fault. Uh, Sick of the same old style, like, you know, the the workout pants or whatever, yeah. and, and the tops. You know, I'm just, I'm sick of the same old style, and... So I'm going with more of a 50s look or 60s look because that's what I want to do. And I'm going to go with more of the dresses, which I've done before, um, because I prefer the dresses. Well, they're more comfortable, too. They are. For me, they're more comfortable. And I, I like the way they feel. So that's that's why. You know, I think they're pretty, and I like the way they feel. But for me, a lot of it's comfort. She looks great. She looks fantastic. You know, we went out to dinner the other night. Um did some serious grocery shopping, so we don't have to leave the house for two months now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we went out to dinner, had a great time. And it's just, that she, you know, she looks so summery, you know. But uh, we're plodding ahead with this show, and uh, we've got exciting stuff this year. I'm telling you, 
we're going to build a permanent set, and we're uh, months from now we're not going to say anything. We're not, no, we're not. We gonna have a it. huge surprise for you guys. Oh, it's, yeah. Well, that's all we yeah, can say. Yeah. But we have a huge yeah, yeah, surprise yeah, for yeah. you guys, and you are going to love it. It's just going to take some time. It's going to take some time. It's a lot of preparation, a lot of work. So it's it like Rick said, it's going to take some time. All right, let's go through these questions. There's a couple of pieces. Okay, this one's for your host with most, Rick. Um, this is from Phil in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Didn't we have him? A few, yeah. Really? Yeah. What is it with Scranton? Okay, we, we know the office is in Scranton, and uh, our, our one of our kids uh, is a fan of the office. Uh, Huge fan. Yeah. Huge fan. Okay, so, okay, here. Phil from Scranton. The Old Testament seems harsher than the New Testament, or am I not understanding it? That's a good question. Um, you know, a lot good of people question. a lot of people say that because you read the Old Testament and and uh, you know, I mean, for goodness sakes, like um, sometimes you know the the earth opens up and this is his chosen people, the Jewish people. They're swallowed up and buried alive, dead, gone. You know, the parents, the children, animals. Um, sometimes God strikes them dead with lightning, and the and then the curses on Egypt when the 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 Jewish people were led out of there by Moses. Uh, Every firstborn would die, you know. It's just, uh, and and then you go back to the the garden where Adam and Eve sinned, and then because of their sin, those two people, the entire generations, you know, to come to pass, have to carry that sin. I know it's 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 odd. You really, it's I, I this is the way I do it. Okay, this is what helps me get get through the holy book. I look at the Old Testament and New Testament as a wide picture of history for thousands of years, you know, and it, it's God directed, obviously, and He always has prophets. But if you notice, majority of people keep screwing up, you know, they keep messing up. So I think you need to look at it all together. Um, and of course, in the New Testament, you'll see Christ in the Old Testament if you look for it. But well, the Old Testament's a book about a nation, whereas the New Testament's a book about the man. Well, that's very good. She's right. Absolutely right. Yeah, that's very good. Look, look let's move on, though, because we could spend yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one's for Crystal. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. <laughs> so you can love this one. Uh, this is from Edith in Pensacola, Florida. Right there. Ooh. Crystal. Hi, Edith. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Crystal, would you call yourself a liberal or conservative? Well, that's not a very modest question. No, I think somewhere in the middle, honestly. Um, I, I I want the liberties to like do our show and be left alone. You know, not live in a police state where they can come in your house anytime they want. Or, you know, I mean, I, I want to be able to drive around safely and stuff. Uh, no, I guess yeah. It's it really depends on which topic you're discussing because. I have very strong opinions in very different areas, and they don't fit in any specific, yeah, yeah. you know, category, whether that be Democrat or Republic, Republican. Well, see, the, the thing for us is, like, uh, being pro-life, you know, being against abortion, you know, against it, um, it you almost give up on these politicians, because they're going to say whatever gets them elected, you know, I mean, and, and the, you know, Planned Parenthood's plowing right ahead, you know, so... We're not going to change anything with that. You know, it's just going to get worse. Uh, but I think I think well, I don't want to speak for you. I'll, uh, let me if this helps. I I always thought I was kind of middle of the road with a lot of people, but the middle of the road politicians always vote pro-choice. So I always have to vote more conservative than I feel I really am. You know. Well, here's the problem, though, Rick. If you're not pro-choice, like if you're like me, because I'm pro-life. But the thing is, about being pro-life, I'm not really sure, because I still believe that if, like, the mother is in danger of losing her life, then at that point, you know, there's reason for abortion late term, you know, because if it's, you know what I mean, if it's one or the other. It's a tough decision. You know. I think at that point it should be the mother's decision, not 
not the government's decision. I think at that point it should be the mother's decision. However, now they've got things such as the morning after pill and stuff. Right. So I don't believe that abortion should be used for rape. I'm sorry, I don't. Use the morning after pill. I mean, I, I'm very sympathetic. I am. You know, it's very sad when somebody's hurt. But be, be cautious, you know. Take care of yourself. You know, you, you take that for uh, precaution and protection. Right, right, absolutely. And, and of course, don't, don't be careful who you trust. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and be and this is for anybody, male or female. Be careful who you bring home. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think we've all look as as previous drinkers or or drug users or whatever. I think we've all done that because we wanted to keep partying. We brought people home we probably wouldn't do when we were sober. So just be careful about that. <clears throat> but uh, let's move on. Uh, I think there's a I think I turn them up. Some. Oh, here we go. Here we go. One for Rick. Um, I want one. Well, we just did you. I want another. Oh, sure, sure. We'll just skip over me. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you talk enough. This is Crystal's world. I just operate around her this circle. This is my world. Yes. Uh, well, okay. you already answered this one. Uh, oh, this, here we are. I found one. You won't believe it. Linda from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Oh, my goodness. Another Scranton. Scranton, Pennsylvania. We love you. All right. Okay. Crystal, what do you think, Ghost Aura? My mom and I saw something at our old house a while back, and I had goosebumps and chills. What do I think, Ghost Aura? Yes. She said, Crystal, what do you think, Ghost Aura? My mom and I saw something oh. at an old house a while back, and I had goosebumps and chills. Well, ghosts, you know, in my opinion, are, are demons or demonic activity. Why would they do that? Why, I, do you, why do you think? I think because they want to scare us, you know. They want to torment us. Didn't and one preacher say they were territorial? Demons were territorial? Yeah, and if, and if we're not, especially if we're not saved. Oh, yeah. You know, if we're not saved, they... If we're saved, they can scare us, but they can't hurt us. But they can almost hurt us if we're not saved. That's my understanding. Now, I could be totally off on that, and we may do something later and totally rebut that, but that's something I'd like to know. Uh, uh, you know, because first you'd say, well, maybe Satan and his demons have free reign over everybody that's unsaved. But then, then you're like, well, has God... God said before he even created anything, he, he knows who is going to be his and who's not. That just, uh, well, that's mind-blowing, but so are, are there innumerous groups of unsaved people that Satan can't touch? Or, I think, my, you know, I just... It, it's it's mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, okay. okay. Now, is it okay if I do a question? Then Go ahead. Okay. I may interrupt, though. Uh, this question is from Tyler. I wonder how old Tyler is in Little Rock, Arkansas. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Little Rock. Okay. Um, are you a minister? Uh, no, no, no. Are you qualified? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm like everybody. I'm a student, and uh, I'm going to be a student until I die, because that, those are my encouraging words. That uh, keep learning and keep growing and keep reading. You know that I was. I found out when I dropped out of high school few years later that I loved to read so through the 80s I read about everything I could devour you know and and uh, like Crystal you know we, you learn that if you can read something you can comprehend it you can learn how to do it yourself I mean you need hands-on experience and help but uh, reading uh, but no I, I thought about being a minister but I don't know I, I don't feel a pull from God I feel him more like uh, you know follow him and, and serve him listen to him read his word, you know, that's how he speaks to us when we read the Bible and pray to him. And I just want to do that. I want to be a better Christian. That's what I want to do. Uh, let's see, we got another one for Crystal. Ah, okay, this is from Dana in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Hello, Michigan. Hello, Kalamazoo. All right. Uh, thank you. Should everyone own Microsoft Office? No. Uh, why? Why? I'd wonder why. Because I, 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 that's a good question from Dana. Uh, because when I, if I was buying a computer and I wasn't married to a genius here, 
I would say, yes, give me Office, give me that, give, give me Adobe, give me it all, you know. I wouldn't say that everybody that buys a computer has to buy Office because when you purchase Office, you can do it a couple different ways. Like, I purchase the software to be downloaded on my computer because I don't need, like, the updates on the templates and stuff because I just don't need it. Uh, now, if you need that sort of thing, then you can go to, like, the 365 program through Microsoft Office where it offers updates and you're paying either yearly or monthly, you know, or whatever. But here's the thing. You're only going to really need Microsoft Office if you're a student, you know, like uh, in, I would say, high school, possibly junior high, but definitely high school, college, um, most professions, you know, that work with computers and stuff, they would need it, um, authors, writers, you know, but... For a regular person who just wants to do shopping and, like, emails and stuff like that, I think it would be a waste of their money and time and effort to purchase something like that. Great, great. Uh, uh, I think the audience liked that. Uh, uh, they appreciated that. Um, all right. Oh, one last question. Um, we have one last question. Well, that's horrible. Don't applaud. Uh, you, you, are we going too long? Is that the problem? Yes. Okay. Well, that, 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 see, we may not have a studio audience the next time. Yeah, same to you. Same to you. Okay. Just fast forward. Fast forward. Rewind. Okay. Fast forward. Love rewind. our studio audience. Love them. Okay. Uh, this one, this one is for me from Mike in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, Rick, where do you get your soups? That's a good question. That is a good question. Ah. Uh, I'll tell you guys, I think most of you guys can look nice for church. If you go to church for uh, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, go to uh, any number of thrift stores. Uh, don't go to the dirtiest and dustiest one, um, not for suits. Uh, go there for other stuff, but not suits. Go go to a, a cleaner thrift store for suits and um, try them on. Try the jackets on. That's where you want to start first. Try a jacket on. And uh, if you do go to like a Kohl's or a department store like that or something try the jacket on that's the easiest way to get your size i mean besides having someone size you um once you know like my, i'm a 44 long you know so all i gotta do is go anywhere on a discount rack clearance 44 long you know and if at a thrift store say there it's a great jacket but there's no sizing on it try it on just try it on but the shirts are uh, just to you know measure your neck and you can buy shirts anywhere well, well, I took our, our 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 youngest son out shopping for his prom uh, tux. Yeah, and yeah. we we went to Kohl's and he got a really reasonable price there. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. was happy with that. He was gonna order it, and then pretty much it was it was we were running late on time and stuff, so it worked out better. Plus, like you said, with the sizing him and stuff, it worked out better for him to try it all on at the store. Yeah. Because once you get your your jacket size, mm -hmm. pants size, and shirt size, once you're done growing, you know, yeah. at least for a few months, Which right? he's like 6'10", so I don't think he's going to grow anymore. Oh, I'm sure he's 17. He's going to be 18. <laughs> yeah, he's he's really going to be a giant, you know. Hello, Mom. <laughs> you know, you know. All right, well, we got we got to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, been, it's been like 30 we, minutes. Well, we've covered everything. It's been a good show, and uh, we haven't been on in a while. Hey, we could split this into two shows. <clears throat> Uh, let's see what the studio audience says. Uh, so it'll be one show. All right. It's going to be okay, one show. Okay, it's one show. All right. <laughs> well, this is Rick. Rick and Crystal telling you to have a great Friday. Hmm. Yeah, okay. All right. Have, have a great Friday. Have a great Friday. It's spring. And get out there and don't, don't forget God loves you. And hopefully it doesn't rain. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay. All right. <laughs>